Most likely, the most important fact in the world today is this. We've been living in the atomic age since 1945. It's a long time now. And none of the catastrophes so freely predicted, so honestly feared, have come to pass. True, there have been dangerous moments like the Berlin and Cuban crises. But so far, sanity has prevailed. And hopefully it always will. And yet there's no point in looking away from reality. We live in a troubled and uncertain world. And it's apt to go on being troubled for a long time to come. The nuclear genie is out of the bottle. And until the world finds a way to clap him back in and then put a lock on the stopper, there'll always remain the outside chance that what our nation and a great many others have been working so hard to avoid could conceivably happen after all. And of course, so long as even the slightest possibility exists, it's something we must reckon with, guard against, prepare for, just as a common sense precaution. So let's talk a little about these things. There's no point in denying or trying to minimize the grim fact that a nuclear attack would take a heavy toll of lives. But in all the Defense Department studies, and there have been many of them, two things come clear. Even under heaviest attack, our nation could, in fact, would survive. And our losses would be much less, your own chances of survival much greater, if each of us would take time to do just three things. First, understand the dangers you'd face. Second, make some fairly simple preparations to meet them. And third, Learn exactly what to do if emergency comes, and then do it. One, two, three. Now, about those dangers. There are some you can't do much about, but others you can. And knowing the distinction between the two could very well mean the difference between staying alive or dying an utterly useless death. When a thermonuclear weapon explodes, four things happen. First, a brilliant white flash of light. Then, a searing wave of heat shooting out from the nuclear fireball. The blast wave hurling debris before it. But even under heavy enemy attack, only four or five percent of our land, one twentieth of the country, would be affected at all by blast and heat. All the rest and all the tens of millions of people in it would escape untouched. Except by radioactive fallout. It could spread on the winds to cover not just 5%, but 80 or 90% of our country. But that's one danger you can do something about if you know a few facts about fallout. When a nuclear weapon explodes anywhere near the ground, tons of dirt and debris are pulverized into millions of tiny particles, swept up into the fireball, turned dangerously radioactive. They drift downwind in the mushroom cloud, then start slowly falling back to Earth. The heaviest and most dangerous particles first, after 15 to 30 minutes in the area nearest the explosion. The lighter ones later, perhaps hours or days later, and hundreds of miles away, wherever the winds may take them. But wherever they fall, in fields and streams, on rooftops, or in the streets, they spell danger. Each one of these fallout particles, no larger than grains of salt or fine sand, is like a tiny x-ray machine shooting out deadly, invisible gamma rays that can damage or destroy the cells of your body. Too large a dose in too short a time means sickness or death. But it's a useless way to die. Useless because it's unnecessary if you use the three defenses you have against it. One is time. 
the most dangerous period would be the first 24 hours after fallout arrives. But fortunately, radiation decays very rapidly. It's like an elevator going down fast. For example, if all the fallout were down on the ground one hour after the burst, then by seven hours, the radiation would have dropped to just 10% of that one hour level. By the end of two days, it would be down to 1%. And in two weeks, it would be just one-tenth of 1%. One in short, with shelter, you can wait it out. But while you're waiting, you'll need protection. And that comes from two things, mass and distance. Mass, meaning thick, heavy, dense materials, concrete, steel, even ordinary earth to absorb or deflect those deadly gamma rays, reduce the amount of radiation reaching you. And distance, because the farther you are from the source of the radiation, fallout particles settled on the roof or on the ground outside, the safer you'll be. Put those two together, mass and distance, and you've got a fallout shelter. You'll find it wherever you see this sign, the black and yellow sign that marks our community fallout shelters. And they could mean the difference between life and death in time of emergency. In a time of crisis, shelter living would be Spartan, none of the comforts of home. And there are things you'd better plan to take along to help ease that shelter stay. A battery-powered radio, flashlight and extra batteries, a blanket for each member of the family, any dietetic foods or special medicines your family may need for reasons of health, like insulin, heart tablets, antihistamines. If you have a baby, don't forget bottles, disposable diapers, cans of formula and special baby foods. And of course, if your neighborhood shelter is not stocked with the basic supplies, you'll need to take as much water and ready-to-eat food as you can carry. That's true of a family home shelter, too, for here you'd be on your own. So keep a two-week reserve of supplies around the house for use in emergency. For shelter use, canned goods are best. Soups, canned meats, all the pre-cooked foods. And packaged goods like crackers and wafers that don't need refrigeration. And water. There you go. That's even more important, for you can't live without it. As a minimum, three or four gallons for each member of your family, and store it in tightly capped bottles or plastic containers. If the supply runs low, don't overlook all the alternate sources right inside your house. The canned fruit and vegetable juices on the kitchen shelf. Soft drinks, milk, and ice cubes from the refrigerator, the 20 to 60 gallons in your hot water tank, and of course, all the water trapped in the pipes of your house plumbing system. In case of attack, simply turn off the main water valve in your basement to avoid having it all drain away if there's a break in the outside mains. Then, turn on the faucet located at the highest point in your house, probably the upstairs bathroom, to let air into the system. Then, draw the water as you need it from the faucet located at the lowest point. It'll be pure, drinkable, and free from fallout. If some fallout particles are on food that you've brought in from the outside, don't worry, they can't make it radioactive. Simply remove the particles, and you remove the danger. Just wash or peel the fruits and vegetables. Wipe off the packages or cans. For safety, it's better to make sure that babies or small children aren't allowed food or liquids that might be contaminated. However, in extreme emergency, thirsty people should not be denied water, even if it contains fallout. There's little danger that any adult could swallow enough to hurt him. It'd be like trying to swallow are. sand. Here, honey. Here, honey.
course, we've only skimmed the surface here of things you need to know and do. Keep a stock of emergency supplies on hand. Foods that require no cooking. Enough drinking water and other liquids. Special medicines. Radio, flashlight, blankets. And if you're planning to use a home shelter, don't overlook the problem of sanitation. Lay in a metal container with a tight-fitting lid, some plastic liners and household disinfectants. You'll need them for disposal of wastes and prevention of disease to keep your family healthy through a shelter stay. If attack seems imminent, take precautions against fire, close doors, windows, Venetian blinds, aluminum foil, whitewash, for even in the fringe areas, miles away from any nuclear explosion, the heat wave could ignite trash and dry wood, set fire to your home. Have some basic firefighting tools on hand, especially a good fire extinguisher, and keep your garden hose connected. Unless your local authorities advise otherwise, fill the bathtub and other containers with water. For under enemy attack, the fire department may not be available you'll have to help yourself. Don't reach for the phone to find out what's happening. The lines need to be kept clear for official emergency use, and you need to find shelter promptly. If you're caught in the open, if there's a sudden flash and you feel warmth at the same time, don't look at the flash. Move. Take cover instantly behind a tree or a wall, in a ditch or a culvert. Curl up on the ground and cover your head with hands and arms. Stay there till heat and blast waves have passed. Then get to shelter before the fallout starts falling. Then turn on the radio. The emergency broadcast station serving your area will be bringing you news, presidential messages, civil defense instructions. You would not be alone. In many shelters, you'd find friends and neighbors who have been specially trained in shelter management, radiological monitoring, medical self-help. All across the country, the Civil Defense Monitoring Network would be measuring and reporting fallout conditions. And from the state and community emergency control centers, your own local authorities would be directing life-saving and recovery operations, keeping in close touch with each shelter. Just follow their official instructions and stay in the shelter till they tell you it's safe to come out. All these things are easy to remember and fairly simple things to do. None of them cost much in time or effort or money. If nothing ever happens, if the world maintains its sanity and enemy attack never comes, that time and effort will still have been well spent. For the better, both we and the nation are prepared, the less chance, really, that anything will happen. And if they ever prove needed, they could save your life in time of emergency. <laughs>